A shocking news has occurred. The Qatar court has given death sentence to eight ex-Indian Navy personnel. The charges are unknown. India was blindsided when they were picked up from the spot. Why they have been arrested, we do not know as of yet. Why they have been given death sentence, that is also very shocking to India. Is it now a decline in India and Qatar's relationship? We are going to talk about that today. From the perspective of GS Mains Paper Second, it is important that you understand today's topic in detail till the very end. Also, from the perspective of prelims, questions can be formulated. So, let's move forward. Yes, do not worry about making notes because I provide notes through my Telegram channel, Pooja Devedi UPSC. If you have any queries, you can talk to me on my Instagram. So, Qatar Court sentences eight ex Indian Navy officers to death. MEA says exploring legal options, legal help will be given. Other legal options will be explored. More higher level of Qatar authority will be involved now. Moving on. What is the background of it? Eight former Indian Navy personnel, former that means they were not employed at the time they were uh, picked up from the spot and arrested. They were arrested by the Qatari authorities in August 2022 and the officers were thereon jailed on the charges that have not been made public at all. They were picked up by the State Security Board which is the Qatar Int uh, Intelligence Agency in the night on the night of August 30, 2022. On September 30th, the men were allowed brief telephonic contact with family members. It's so shocking that Indian Embassy came to know about this incidence in the mid of September. 15 days passed and the first consular access was granted on October 3. That means an Indian ambassador visited them. They also allowed weekly phone calls to family members thereafter. The first hearing took place on March 29, 2023. Family sources said that they had not even been informed about what were the charges. On April 6, the MEA, Minister of Ex Ministry of External Affairs, had said the Indian government would provide legal assistance to them. Now, the eight veterans, they were actually working with Dahara Global Technologies and Consultancy Services. This is a defense service provider company and it was owned by an Omani national who was a retired squadron leader of the Royal Omani Air Forces. He was also arrested, but later on in November last year, he was released. But the website of the company, as soon as this news broke the lines, broke the wires, it came to be known that the website was removed. A new website was developed. And this website actually says that there is no mention of the connection with the Qatari naval forces. Why? Because before that, this particular company used to give training, logistics and maintenance to the Qatari Emiri Naval Forces. This is really fishy in nature. And the managing director of the current website and the company, man managing director commander Purnendu Tiwari received the Pravasi Bharatiya Samman in 2019. He was the only person from the armed forces to have received the award. He was later on feted in Doha by the then Indian ambassador P. Kumaran as well. And the function was held at the Indian Cultural Centre. My God, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh visited in November 2008. And this was the first ever visit by an Indian Prime Minister to Qatar. The thing is that it, these two countries do have friendly relations. Qatar is not Pakistan. We have had shared friendly, friendly relations. Also, we have Indian diaspora of a huge amount that is living and working in Qatar. The Qatar, Qatari Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani visited in 2015. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also went to Qatar in 2016. Dr. Jay Shankar visited at least three times. And for the first time, any uh, foreign minister went to Qatar was late Shushma Swarajji. Moving on. In 2021, India was among the top four export destinations of Qatar. Also, it is among the top three sources of Qatar's imports. And the bilateral trade is also good. It is valued at $15 billion. It is mostly LNG and PNG exports from Qatar but that, were, that is worth over $13 billion. Defence cooperation is also described as one of the pillars between India and Qatar's relationship. The India-Qatar Defence Cooperation was signed in 2008 when the Indian Prime Minister visited Qatar, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh back then. And this was also extended to another five years in 2018. And it, is, it has been described as just the relationship between India and Qatar just short of stationing troops. That means from the perspective of defense relations also, we are very important to each other.
The pact included training of the key uh, QE and F by India as well as mutual visits. So the Indian Naval and Coast Guard ships they regularly visit Qatar. Also, QE and F delegations participated in two maritime exercises last year. Two editions of a joint naval exercise, which is by the name of Zair El Bahr, they have also been held. Also, last year we agreed, India and Qatar agreed that we are going to celebrate 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relationship in 2023. Now, there are challenges. The first challenge came when BJP spokesperson Nupur Sharma, she made derogatory comments about the profit on national television. And Qatar was the first country that demanded public apology from Nupur Sharma over this. Back then, it was really bad. The entire situation became really bad for India in the Islamic world. And not only that, Indian ambassador was called by Qatar Emir for a dressing down. So Qatar was the first country to pinpoint that. The visit by then President Venkaya, Vice President Venkaya Naiduji, at the time it was shadowed by controversy, he was supposed to have a meal with Qatar Emir. But Qatari Emir did not come citing medical reasons. So it was very controversial in nature. Then second challenge is the jailing of the eight ex-Navy personnel. Why? Because there are approximately 800,000 Indians that are living and working there. Now, if India is not able to take this on an authoritative level, on a bilateral level, then it will prove to be fatal for the Indian diaspora. Because it might seem that India's leverage over Qatar is decreasing. So this has nuances that we have to know about. Indians are actually the largest expatriate community in Qatar. Moving on, in November 2022 also, Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar visited for the FIFA World Cup, FIFA inaugural. But uh, it was expected that these jailed men, ex-Indian Navy personnel, the matter of them would be resolved, but nothing. Moving on, there is a shift as well. If we compare the relationship that we developed with Qatar during the times of late uh, Minister Sushma Swarajji, Sushma Swarajji, she was very in touch for the welfare of the global uh, Indian community. She was a very different person. She had a different approach. So the softly, softly manner in which the government has approached this case has also been impactful. India has not been very, you can say, approachive to this entire matter. Because late Sushma Swaraj, she made welfare of the Indians abroad her topmost priority. She used to personally outreach families of those who have been going through certain turbulence across the globe, such as sending air ambulance for a health emergency. She used to do that as well. But she also had accepted defeat when 39 Indian workers who were abducted by the ICs were long dead. She accepted that with a very heavy heart. She was constantly in touch with the family members of the turbulent, of those who were abducted uh, in those turbulent times that everything was under control, but they were long dead. So there has been a shift in India's policy towards its diaspora in the current times. India needs to do more on this front. I hope you understood this topic. Thank you so much for watching.